Come on, let's give him a hand clap. That's our future praise team right there. Amen. Amen. He knows your name, church. Amen. Lisa sings that. That's a beautiful song. Sister Jackie, come on. Hallelujah. Brother Daniel, come and say a word for the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to say I love the Lord and I appreciate Him. And over the last few days, I've just been thinking back over the past few years. And, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs. And there's times that I've really tried to get people in church. And there's times that I didn't even think about getting people in church. And I really feel a whole lot of better about the times when I was out trying to get people to come and to bring them in. And I was just talking to my Uncle Frank back here on the way in. I was like, there was about two or three years ago, there was three or four people I was really trying to get in church. And I was talking to Frank, and he was, he was coming with me. And I had uh, my wife's uncle. I was trying to get him to come, and he came a couple times. And then my buddy, I worked out with him for five years straight, well, anyway, he ended up facing a 25 to 40 years in prison. You know, you can choose which way you want to go when people try to draw you in. Or maybe you're the one that's not trying to get somebody in. You might be costing somebody a lot of time. So, I mean, and then my wife's uncle just passed away a couple of weeks ago. And other guys trying to get to come to church. He had a wreck and he's been paralyzed for a couple years. So, I mean, sometimes the people you're reaching out for at the time, you don't know why you feel like you need to reach out for them. Take the time. Talk to the people. Try to reach them. It's not on your hands. And you don't have to look back and say, I didn't try. And I wish I had. So, I mean, we got to just try not to mess up ourselves. I mean, I do. And I'm working, trying to do better all the time. And I love the Lord. Amazing 
You're more than enough. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how glorious. You are amazing. Oh, how marvelous. wonderful oh how marvelous hallelujah brother jason come on sing brother michael testify amen you know i was sitting there thinking huh, while they're singing and brother jerry said it before we ever got started he said pray believing you know if there's one thing that i'm ever guilty of J jesus said in john 8 and 44 not only is satan a liar but he's the father of it and, you know, so many times what he likes to do is plant a seed of doubt in our mind. So what we do is take the things that we leave with God and we pick them back up again. And God says, I've already took that from you. I'm going to take care of that in my time, in my way. I'm going to take care of that for you. There's no need for you to pick it back up. But, you know, I was sitting there thinking tonight. I had no preacher tell me one time. He said, son, I went and he said, I preached the revival. And he said, when I got up, got to this place where I was going to preach the revival, he said, there's a man and woman there. And he said, they asked me if the pastor said, can we go by their house and eat? And he said, that'd be fine. He said, we pulled into that house. And he said, they didn't have much. He said, it was a little old wood board house. And said, you could about see through the walls and said, had dirt floors. But he said, the Spirit of God was all over that place. He said, and I never will forget, we sat down to eat. He said, when we sat down to eat, he said, they had a spread. He said, as we sat there and we began to eat, he said, all of a sudden, before we did, they got to say the blessing. He said, and that little old mama kicked that chair out from behind her and crawled under the table and said, I remember as plain as day what she said, God save Leroy. God save Leroy. And he said, she'd cry. He said, pretty soon I heard a daddy kick the table out, the chair out from under, and he started saying, God save Leroy. God save Leroy. And he said, I looked at the pastor. He said, I said, what's going on? And said, the pastor looked at me and said, well, you see, Leroy's their son. And said, he's in the military. And said, he's become an alcoholic. And said, for three years, he said, they've prayed for Leroy. He said, and he said I looked at the pastor and he said, well, I've never missed a good prayer meeting. He said, you care if we just climb under the table with him and pray for Leroy? He said, we all clawed under the table that night and we prayed for Leroy. He said, and I preached all week of that revival. He said, and he said, I just kept thinking about Leroy. He said, and every night that mom had come down and he said, I'd hear when I go to bed at night, God save Leroy. God save Leroy. He said, I preached that last night. And he said, I give the invitation. He said, and already a little seed of doubt had started to plant up in my mind. Lord, I'd like to see Leroy. 
He said, we'd went all week and nothing had really happened. He said, and all of a sudden that last night, he said, that mama came down one more time. He said, and she knelt down at that altar and he said, I heard, God save Leroy. God save Leroy. He said, and all of a sudden, he said, I got down. He said, I knelt to pray with her. He said, and I felt two arms fall on me. He said, and I looked around. He said, there's a young man holding a hat in, my, in his hand. He said, and I looked at him and he said, what's wrong with you, son? He said, my name's Leroy. He said, and that's my mama. He said, and he said, he said, I've been far a preacher. And he said, I've went a long way. He said, but tonight when I lay down, I couldn't lay down my head. He said, knowing where I stood with the Lord. You see, tonight, why so many of us, we don't have any Leroy's, is because we don't ever crawl under the table. Amen. You see, if we'd crawl under the table and we'd ask God and we'd believe God and we'd search God with our old heart and when Satan makes us doubt, if we just crawl back under the table again and say, I'm not going to give up on it. I'm going to give it to Jesus. Then we'd see God move. But we won't see God move until we believe God and trust Him tonight. Go ahead. Bless the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Y'all pray for me if I try to sing this. Uh, the Lord never gives you more than you can bear. He says, My burden is easy and my yoke is light. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I
Sister Carmela in here, you and Paul come and sing that song. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Love you, brother. While they're singing that, we got two men in here that's going to have major surgery, the 30th and the 31st. Carl, I want you to stand up. Brother Hans, I want you to stand up. If you feel led to go over and pray with them while they're singing this, there's a promise coming down the dusty road. Amen. And I believe Brother Anthony was preaching that the other night about a, a healing ministry going to start coming through here. Amen. Old enemy, I heard a girl testify today, and she said she was sitting in her desk, and she opened a package, and it blew up on her. And she said immediately after that happened, she found herself in a hospital, and pretty bad shape and she said you know she said fear tried to attach itself to me try to attach itself to me but you know what she said I got with the Lord and began to pray and now the devil scared of me Whoo, glory amen amen hey the devil run from you when you got to get to praying in Jesus name hey he he says resist the devil flee from him hallelujah and I, I just tell him talk to the hand but if some of you, while they're singing this song, will feel led to pray for these men because they're going in the 30th and the 31st. And I just felt led to the Spirit of God just told me, hey, church, if we believe in salvation, we, believe in, we can believe in healing. Amen. We, we need to take back what the devil stole from us. Amen. If he, put, if, if he went to that whipping post and he laid those stripes on his back for our healing, I believe in healing. Amen. I believe God's going to do something here tonight. I just feel it in my spirit because I believe healing is in God's plan. Whether it be physical, mental, or just tell the devil, devil, I ain't listening to you no more. You ain't going to scare me no more because, hey, I got a big God that's on your trail. Amen. So let's, let's all stand while they sing this song. I believe, and if you feel led to go pray with these men, uh, Brother Hans is looking at a bad shoulder. Brother Carl, Carl's looking at another knee surgery. And I believe that, you know, I hope he does better than he did the last time. We keep praying they will. Amen. And let's just ask God, if you feel led tonight, go lay hands on these men, men of God. And let's pray as uh, Sister Carmilla and Paul sang this song. Hallelujah. And, 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 and say, God, we need a healing. We need a healing in this house. He's a healer in the house. He's a healer in the house. Amen. So let's just get with him and sing it. Go ahead, sister, brother. The hand of fear gripped the crowd that day in Jerry's home. When the doctor shook his head and said, she's gone. You could feel the mother's heartbreak. You could hear their cries and moans. For the little girl was only 12 years old. But somewhere in the Some of you ladies get around Linda here. She's having surgery in the morning. I knew there's somebody else in here, but I couldn't quite know it. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. They said, look, somebody's coming. But what they did not know, it was a promise coming down their dusty road. Coming down the dusty road From his holy hands The healing virtue flows He's got the key to what you need That then hell will defeat There's a plan that's coming down your dusty road 
Thank you, church. Thank you, church. Now, Brother Anthony, come on. Hallelujah. Let the man of God come on. I'm going to take up the offering. Hallelujah. Brother Matt, you and uh, Nick want to help me and take up the offering. Let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you're precious. You're all together lovely. You're an amazing God. Lord, we thank you tonight for all that you do for us. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the love. We thank you, Lord, for putting food on our table tonight. We thank you, Lord, for supplying us with a job. 
Lord, we ask you, Lord, as these people give tonight, Lord, from their heart. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to bless each and every one. Bless this man of God that comes tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, preaches the word. We thank you for him and his wife and children. We thank you for these people in this church. Lord, that love you or they wouldn't be here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Lord, you're an amazing God. You're an amazing God. Hallelujah. Lord, we can't outgive you. We can't outdo you because, Lord, hallelujah, you just keep right on giving. And Lord, we ask you tonight to bless us, oh God. Bless these people that give. God, I pray, Lord, that you'll multiply this offering. Lord, in the gold for your kingdom, that soul might be won. Lord, if they just want his brother Anthony's got a burden, the church got a burden. Lord, during this fast, Lord, Lord, if we knock on doors, Lord, I've been doing that. I've been asking people to come to the house of God. And Lord, they're not going to look like us. They're not going to smell like us. They're not going to act like us. But Lord, you're going to bring them from the north, south, east, and west. I believe you put that in my spirit when I first come to this little body of believers. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to do a work here tonight, Lord, as this man of God comes, this shepherd, Lord, that you put over these little lambs. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that tell an anointing fall in here tonight like no other anointing. Hallelujah. I feel you so strong in this house tonight, Lord. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for what Paul said. We're so passed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. And Lord, I bring you, bring those spirits back with you while we're here worshiping you. Lord, look down on us tonight. Heal your people. Touch your people. Lord, we'll be slow to give you praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said amen. Come on, Brother Anthony. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Friday night service here at 7 o'clock. John will be preaching. Please come Friday night if you can. I thought it was cold. I thought the weather was bad and got a call today from Canada. She said it's only 42 below zero. So I told her, I said, I have nothing to grumble about. Amen. Stand and sing this with me. You got a hold to God, son, changing hand. A hold to God, son, changing hand.
you got a hold to God's son to change in hand. Change in hand. I'm not going to hold to God's son. Sunday, Monday, our nation celebrated the election of our president. Now back midsummer, his party chose him, but he wasn't yet elected. But after he was elected, it was ordained and nothing could stop it. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about your ordination. If you could ever understand your ordination, if you could ever understand what it means when God ordains you, if you could just ever get that in your heart, no enemy or storm or power would have power over you. Now there's a difference between being chosen and ordained. I mean, you're called, if you're chosen. Chosen is an opportunity to serve. But to fulfill that, you've got to give yourself totally to it. No reserve. Just submit to it. Surrender to it. Lord, anoint me to speak to somebody tonight. If you could get a hold of this, they, they, somewhere in this room, fear would break. You wouldn't have to live under fear. You wouldn't have to live under dread, under what else the enemy's going to do if you could just understand that, that, that when God, when God, when God puts his plan of approval on your life, would you smile at somebody and thank them for being here? Would you give Betty Jarrett a hand clap? We'll have church tonight. Betty's home. Amen. 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 Appreciate these young men on this front row tonight. I, Nick is driving me to church and... Uh, Nick told me, he said, he said, Brandon, he said, I want to get closer to God. So everybody, I, I like that. I like that. And he said, I got a, he said, I got a scripture I need help on. He said, what does it mean? And I really like them questions. He said, what does it mean if you hand a fin, you cut it off? I said, explain it where I can understand it. What does it mean? And I said, Nick, you remember the little lady before she moved away, she was in church with us, and she said, I was riding at school with my little old friend. My little old friend started listening to country music. And before I know it, my foot's bobbing up and down and my head's bopping. And I looked at her and said, friend, I love you. But I love him more and I got to cut you off. That's what it means. Anything that offend you or come between. Anything. Anything that would be pull on you more than God would pull on you. Anything that you would allow to come between you and the Lord. If you can't control your TV, if you can't control your internet, if you can't, if you've got friends that you can't that that pulls on you more than you pull on them, you have to wipe a tear 
Abraham wiped a tear and said, Hagar, I won't be back here anymore. I love him more. He has a plan for my life. Hallelujah. One of the hardest things you'll do in this life is say goodbye, but sometimes you've got to let it go and go on with God. Why don't somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, help me to let some stuff go. Just help me to release some stuff and go on with God. Sweet presence here. Sweet presence here. Genesis 1.15. Let there be lights in the firm of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firm of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning the fourth day. God said, lights, I'm going to put you up there and I'm going to have a switch when you come on and when you go down and I'm going to let it vary in the seasons, but I'm going to be totally controlling it. And year after year, generation after generation, century after century, each season, it'll come back and do the same thing over and over and over and over because I am ordaining it and I am setting it up. Psalms 104.19 He appointed the moon for season the sun knoweth his going down Hallelujah Hallelujah That old old sun sits there and says I can't but farmer you better speed that tractor up I'm getting ready to go down God's got a set time for me When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers the moon and the stars that thou hast ordained Hallelujah Psalm 72 and 5, Thou shalt fear thee as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generations. Job 9 and 7, Which commanded the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars. Psalm 72 and 5, They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. I love that throughout all generations. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandments when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Job cried in Job 38 and 4, Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou understand who hath laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest who hath stretched the line upon it. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of men shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with the doors that it break not forth as it issued out of the womb? When I made the clouds of the garment thereof in thick darkness, a swaddle band for it, and break up for it decreed places and set bars and doors. Hallelujah. God said, I got bars that can't come past like a prison. And I've got doors that, that, that it can't open and close at its own pleasure. And said, hitherto as thou come no further, then shall the proud waves thereof be stayed. God said, I don't care how proud or how big or great those waves are. I draw lines and it can't pass except I allow it. I remember the first time I took my parents to Florida and daddy stood there on the seashore and I, or the ocean. I watched my daddy weep. And, and I, said, I said, Daddy, what's, what's moved you? What's touching you? He said, Son, look at that. He said, That little old shore has been here a long time. And them little old waves, they leap and they say, I'll take this land over. And God, a long time, drew a little old line all the way around this little old continent. Said, You could only come so far. And he said, Thousands of years later, them waves still have to obey our God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to about be shouting in this house. God is that big. God is that precise. God is that in control. God, God decrees to the, to the sun, I want you to come up at a certain time. I want you to go down at a certain time. He decrees the moon. You don't have your own light. I want you to be at a certain angle. I want you to be here at a certain time. I want you to be over here at a certain time. God's really been dealing with Mike about some stuff. And, 
Micah said, Dad, some of these folks that's saying that the world's billions of years old, he said, one thing that just contradicts that scientifically, he said, the sun, the sun is what gives light to it. And he said, the sun is a ma massive gas. And he said, I did a study. If the sun was that old, it would be burned up. And he said, if it was that old to be burning that long, he said, it would have to be so big that it would consume all of the universe. So God has a way of letting us know, hallelujah, before creation was, there was just me. I am, and beside me, there is no other. Somebody just say Jesus out loud. Somebody just say his name out loud. Somebody just say his name, hallelujah. So I want to talk to our seasoned soldiers tonight, but I really want to talk to our young converts. I want to talk to, to folk that just come and know the Lord. I want to talk to you. When you come to Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle, it's not this building or this ministry, this, but when you came to an altar and you found Jesus, you didn't join a civics club. You didn't join a rotary club. You didn't join some band or you didn't join some, some, some legion or something. When you came and you accepted Jesus as your King and your Savior, when you repented of your sins and asked the Lord to come into your life, you stepped into something that's eternal. Hallelujah. You stepped into something that's eternal. I remember when the TV ministry started out, all the stuff and wires and, and, and things we bought from Circuit City. And every town I'd go to with Michael or somebody I'd call and Andy call and say we need this and I'd say well there's a circuit city here if we don't find it we'll order it from B&H and that place is everywhere and I just thought there'd always be a circuit city but with all their stores and all their cities they come a time that circuit city was no more nations will rise and nations will fall and kingdoms will come and kingdoms will go but to his kingdom there is no end hallelujah you didn't join something that's going to fade away it's not going to go out of style it's it's not going to lose. It's not going to be scattered nor devastated nor destroyed when there's no more AT&T, when there's no more General Motors, when the United States is no more. There's still going to be a church. There's going to be a remnant. There's going to be a kingdom because God put it in decree. God declared it and God decreed it. There would be a kingdom. God decreed it. There would be a kingdom. If God is faithful to keep the sun shining, if the sun is important to God, if the stars and the moon are important to God, that after storms and after snowstorms and blizzards and after tornadoes and winds and dust storms, if God makes all the clouds dissipate, and the blue yonders return smooth. If he's concerned about all that, then the devil is a liar to tell you God's not concerned about you. Hallelujah. Would you turn around and preach that to one person? God is concerned about you. God is concerned about you. About, about six months ago, I, the, the, the back unit wouldn't come on and I'm trying to get it to come on and it's got a safety thing if the if the uh, the pipe gets stopped in any way it'll, it's got an automatic shut off and I pulled it apart and there was a little old bird it somehow got past and got down in that pipe and I stood there looked at that little old bird and I thought bird I don't know when you got in here and I don't know how you got in here, but there's somebody that knows when you got in here. Because the Bible says there's not even a little sparrow that falls to the ground that God don't know about. And if God knows about a little old bird, don't you know he knows about you? I'm coming after that spirit that's telling somebody you're walking through this by yourself. I'm coming after that spirit that's telling somebody I'll break you, I'll destroy you, I broke others before you. How can you... you enemy break you when God's with you? How can the enemy destroy you when God's with you? Hallelujah. How can the enemy overpower you or overthrow you if God be for you? Who can be against you? Hallelujah. Anybody can praise God when we get on the other side of Jordan. Anybody can praise God after the waters roll back. Before I preach tonight or before somebody gets all your victory, I wish somebody would just stand up say, devil, I'm coming out of this by the grace of God. But somebody let the devil know you're not throwing in the towel. Would somebody let the devil know you didn't start out to die in this storm? Would somebody let the devil know 
our God's got a good report. Our God's got a good record. Hallelujah. He's moved before. He's moved in impossible odds before. He's moved in impossible situations before. He's walked in fiery furnaces before. He's walked in lion dens before. He's rolled back red seas before. He's made a way where there seemeth to be no way before. He's put oil in the barrel before. He's put meal in the barrel before. He's still God. He changes not. He's a God in whom there is no variableness. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forever and he's going to keep on being God and he's going to keep on healing and he's going to keep on delivering and he's going to keep on fighting for us and he's going to keep on blessing. He's going to keep on raising up a standard. He's just going to keep on being God. He's just going to keep on being God. He's just going to keep on being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. Is there not appointed time to men upon earth? God has an appointed time. Now here is mine and your biggest, and honestly, I don't want to make this thing too easy, but here's our only challenge, is getting in the yoke and staying in the yoke with God. And remember, remember, you're the young mule. You don't have to do all the pulling. He will. You don't have to know all the way to go. He's been there before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old seasoned farmers, they never, real seasoned farmer, they say they never put two mules together and put them in a good field. You get two unlearned mules or two unlearned donkeys or, or horses or something, they don't know what to do. They can tire up and hurt somebody. They'll put a young one with the seasoned one. Hallelujah. I'm in the yoke with the Prince of Peace and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And my challenge is to stay in the yoke. And fears whisper and get out. It won't work. Discouragement whisper and get out. It don't work. Your past is whisper and get out. It won't work. Your future is telling somebody it'll always be like this. Just give up. Get out. It won't work. But I hear this word whispering to somebody now. If you'll walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the love. I hear this word telling somebody I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you Lord, I, I hear this Bible telling somebody tonight I will never leave you I will go with you always give him a hand clap amen amen if God is faithful to keep the sun shining after storms don't you know he's going to pick you up after your storm? Don't somebody know that? Don't somebody realize that God, God knew about this I was facing before I got in it. God understood this storm before I faced it. And he knew, God knew what I was made out of. God knew what I was made out of. I, I, the, the, the General Motors, Ford Motors, Dodge, Dodge Motor Corporation. Plymouth, any of them. They're not going to make the fender out of the same stuff they do the, the crankshaft. They're not going to make the, 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 the tie rod ends out of the same stuff that, that they, they wheel the, the wheel trimmings or the, the trimmings on the windows. They not, they, it's not the same type of metal. And if God's letting you face something, God knows what you're made out of and He will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able to bear. But in your temptation, He will make a way that I might escape. I'm coming to arrest that lying spirit tonight that tries to torment me and you and tells me I'm not able to face this. Hallelujah. I wish somebody said out loud, I'm well able to face this. If God brought me to it, he'll bring me to it. If God allowed this to come my way, God would break something to me that to break me. God's not God's plan over me is not to break me. God's not trying to crush me. God's not trying to get me out. God's not trying to hurt me. God's not trying to destroy me. God has a plan. I said God has a plan for my life. I don't understand what he's doing sometimes. Sometimes I just got to keep walking. Hallelujah. I don't I got to run wide open all the time. I don't got to feel chill bumps all the time. I don't got to have a vision all the time. I don't got to speak in tongues all the time. I don't got to shout all the time. Sometimes I just got to keep walking. But if I will keep walking. 
If I will keep walking. If I'll just keep walking. If I will just keep walking. If I will just keep on walking. If you'll just keep on walking. You got to walk on. Just get in the yoke with him and keep on walking on. Hallelujah. Just get in the yoke with him and keep on walking on. Now here, and I, I know we, we're on, we're live tonight. We're going to put this on TV and we get some folk upset. But this is where the Calvinism, Calvinism comes in. And some of the other groups get real upset with us. The way they preach ordination and predestination is in the way we preach it. They preach it. Come to the altar. Repent. Last Jesus into your heart. You're sealed. Predestinate ordinations, it's over. That's the first step. That's the first step. If our president was to betray our nation, he would break his ordination. He is ordained the next four years. He's elected. He is ordained and predestinated to be the president of the United States for four more years. But his, his ordination is not just in our vote. His, his ordination, a lot rests on his own shoulder. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People said, well, I've been to the altar and I've got saved and I've got an ordination and I'm going to preach. I'm going to do something. Your ordination is more than your call. Your ordination and your predestination is submitting to his hand. It's surrendering to him. Hallelujah. Because it's not, it's not just your flesh that's ordained. It's your spirit that's ordained. And your spirit must continually submit to his spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, somebody ought to praise him out loud. Hallelujah. 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 If you could ever understand this, that's the reason Jerry Stevens will walk away from five car wrecks. Hallelujah. That's the reason Jerry Stevens will walk away from five car wrecks because of first and God's not through with him and the second God's not through with him and the third and the fourth God has a plan hallelujah I'm not telling you you're going to live a hundred years or a thousand years I'm telling you God's got a set time for me and you and if we abide in him and he abide in us cancer's not going to take us out a bullet's not going to take us out a heart attack's not going to take us out an aneurysm's not going to take us out if we will fulfill our ordination if we'll be what God wants us to be and if we'll totally submit to what God has called us to do. We're not leaving here till God is through with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have the answer to all this. James will be in about at the same prison Peter's in. James won't walk out of it. He had a short call. He had a short predestination of ordination and he finished it and they beheaded him but Peter's in about the same prison but God's plan is not through with him. James did not miss God. James did not fail God. He fulfilled. How about the shout in this place right now he fulfilled what God called him to fulfill and he laid down and he went home hallelujah but Peter will walk out of that prison because God has a plan for him and they can't they can't behead him they can't hang him on the cross till God is through with him I wish somebody speak to death right now you have no power over me till God opens his hand I don't know who I'm preaching to but about hey I feel an authority in this room right now death you have no power over me if you have power over me I need to worship you because you're bigger than God you have no power over me till God releases me into your hand you can't touch me till God gives you authority you can't touch me you can't help me till God gives you liberty why because I am walking in my ordination my life's not my own I'm bought with the price I'm not saying I'll live till I'm 60 I'm not saying I'll live till I'm 55. I say if I walk in my ordination, I will not leave here till I preach the life's message God's ordained for me to preach, till I've sang the life song, and I'm about to shout in this place right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you and I got enough sense, I know I don't I don't I want to stay with Sheila in this precious church as long as I can. But if we've got enough common sense, we need to realize when God's through with us, we ought to just say, even so be Lord Jesus, take me home. Hallelujah. 
Can we stop and somebody praise him out loud? Would somebody praise him out loud in this place? Would somebody just bless him out loud? That's the reason you need to get in the yoke. You need to tell flesh, let me go. You need to tell busyness, let me go. You need to tell yesterday, let me go. You need to tell addictions, let me go. You need to tell religion, let me go. You need to tell every enemy, let me go. I've got to get in the yoke. I hear a voice calling me. I hear the Lord pulling on me and drawing me to walk with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the stars, the sun, the moon. The sun just can't run around and do anything expect God to hold it. It's got to remain where God placed it. And you don't want me to preach this. I know you're in a Pentecostal church. And I know you're a man and woman of God. But your flesh is enmity against God. And if you feed that thing at all, if you feed it at all, it'll rebel against the laws of God. If you, if you allow it at all, if you allow it at all, it'll rebel against It'll pull against. And it will become your worst enemy. It wasn't the Philistines that destroyed Saul. It wasn't the Hittites or the Parasites. He destroyed himself. He fell on his own sword and the smush of iron. Hallelujah. 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 I feel a strength in here. Somebody lift your little hands and say, God, let me know you've got your hand on my life. But somebody say that out loud. It's not enough to know you got your hand on the preacher. It's not enough to know you got your hand on the pastor. I wish a young person or a mom or dad would cry out in here. God, let my family know you got your hand on our life. Let my children know you got your hand on our life. Let me understand. God, make this sermon real to me. Hallelujah. I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to go around letting the devil beat me up 24 hours a day. If God is really who we say he is, and if he's as precise as he, we preach he is, and if he's everything who says this Bible says he is, and he's big enough for 6,000 years to take care of a sun in the moon, who am I to think God can't take care of me? Who am I to think God can't handle my problems? Hallelujah. Who am I? Hallelujah. 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 Somebody help me preach. Why don't, why don't somebody tell the devil, this ain't my first storm. This is not my first battle. This is a big one, but it's not my first this is not the one that's going to take me out I'm hid in Christ I'm hid in Jesus my life is hid in Christ this will just be another testimony this will just be another witness this will be another carving on my staff God made a way where they look like there's no way God made a way the preacher couldn't fix it the governor couldn't fix it the doctor couldn't fix it but I'm still here God had a plan for me God had a plan for me God had a plan God God had a plan. God had a plan for my life. God had a plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. Young folk, get the yoke and walk with him and see what he's got for you. I mean, walk in the Spirit. Don't please your flesh. Don't don't satisfy. Don't give to it. Don't yield anything that would make your heart cold toward God. Anything that pull you away. Anything. I told my friend, I love God. I know God loves me, but I really like it. I don't don't like those seasons in my life when I can't find Him. You look and where are you? I look on my left and my right, Job cried, and it looks like he's hid behind the lattice. I love those seasons when there's nothing between me and my Savior. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you just know, you just know. You pray, he's going to listen. You worship, he's just going to just shake his head and accept it and receive it. Nothing between. If God is faithful, take care of the sun and the moon and the star. Don't you know he's going to take care of me and you? If he cares about a little bird that falls to the ground, I know thy works. For that, you don't know who's against me. You don't know all the people that hate me and would like to tear me down. I know the Revelations 3 and 8. I know the works. Behold, I was set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. Hallelujah. Friend, God opens doors. You ain't nobody can close it. If God opened doors for you, they ain't nobody can close it. 
God opened doors. No man can close it. God opened doors. These, these, these babies, these little dolls were singing, He knows my name. Daniel 4.35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doth according to his will in the army of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand on to say unto him, What does thou? Would you come back to the music? Satan's trying to get you to walk away. He's trying to get you to give up and unlink and get out of the yoke. I know you don't want to go back to your old life, but he's trying to get you to get out of the yoke. Not only you ain't got no desire to go back to sin, but he's telling you this not work. Get out of the yoke. Somebody stand the yoke. Say, God has an ordination for me. And if I can get in that ordination, nothing can stop me. I'm not saying they won't be prisons. I'm just saying I'll come out of them. I'm not saying they won't be shipwrecks. I'm just saying I won't drown in them. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee to the time of life. The Lord shall serve between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. Though my life may shake at times, I'm part of a bigger picture that will endure forever. And I was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Hallelujah. Kingdoms of this earth will crumble and fall, but to his kingdom there is no end. I'm more than a citizen of the United States. I am more than a citizen of Tennessee. I am more. I am more than a citizen of Athens. I am more than a citizen of McMinn County. Hallelujah. What one day there'll be no more Tennessee. One day there'll be no more United States. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Somebody ought to shout in here. I am part of a big picture. I am part of that which is forever, that which is eternal. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Luke twenty two twenty nine, 29, and I will appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. We're not losers. You're not going under. 2 Timothy 2, 19. Second, and nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. The Lord, and let every one that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Let every one that names the name of the Lord stay in the yoke with Jesus. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall say, would you stand to your feet?